But how, how much have you looked into psychedelics and the origins of religious experience? Your your driver was telling me about it on the way here. It sounds like you a, haven't looked into that. Other I, than I, that? I, well, I have a I have a I have a former student who had an experience of God on a uh, a psychedelic. Me you know? too. You know, so I I I am aware of those experiences. You haven't yeah. had them? I have not. Would you it, want to? Um. I'm sort of happy with the experiences of God I've had in the sort of. Uh, Wouldn't you like to actually say hi? Uh, what's that? <laughs> say, stay hi. <laughs> say hi. Say hi. Say yeah. Hi. Like say hello to God. Yeah. Well, um, I found other ways to do it, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, okay. I'm not. Uh, and again, this is the thing we were saying about personal experience before. Right. It, it's not dispositive of these big dis these big discussions. Are you aware of John Marco Allegro? No. The John Marco Allegro, who was a, uh, a scholar, a uh, biblical scholar, and he was also an ordained minister who became agnostic when he started studying theology. He was one of the people that deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls, and he worked with it over a period of uh, 14 years deciphering it. And it's very controversial, but his interpretation of Christianity after th reading these scrolls was that it was initially about psychedelic mushroom rituals and fertility rituals and that this was what they were documenting in these ancient scrolls. And that what he believed is that these psychedelic mushrooms were what we thought of as mana or the host, that, that the body of Christ, that these, these experiences were directly attributed to people taking these psychedelic mushrooms in these, these rituals. And many people who have had psychedelic experiences, especially on psilocybin, and on other like very potent psychedelic drugs. Is that the acting agent within uh, mushrooms that creates the psychedelic? That's, that's in one type of mushroom. Okay. The one that John Marco Allegro uh, alleges is a little bit more complex. It's called the Amanita muscaria, and it's more, more complex in that uh, the belief is that it is seasonably variable, genetically variable, and that it must be uh, cultivated in a specific way. And many people who have tried to achieve these states with uh, Amanita muscaria have failed where others have succeeded. And it's because of, obviously, because it's illegal and frowned upon, it's, it's very complex. You know, John Hopkins has done, uh, they've done a lot of work on psilocybin, and so have MAPS, and so have, uh, there's a lot of, uh, MAPS has done a lot of work with uh, various psychedelic drugs, hmm. but, but the, the idea is that these ancient rituals were how they connected to God, and that they hid these from the conquering Romans and from all these different religions that w wanted to impose their philosophies on them when, they, when the people were conquered. But they kept these parables and they kept these stories and they kept these, these legends of these experiences. And John Marco, Marco Allegro wrote this book called The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. It's a very interesting book. Mm -hmm. And then he wrote another book called, um, the, I think that book, was it? God, this, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth is his, his other book that he wrote about it. But it's interesting. And I, I, what, what, Joe, what was your experience of God in 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 uh, when as, you, as you were you know using I those substances? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm j kind of joking around when I said it's God. What what it seems like is the root of everything. Like when when you have these experiences, they're so they're so profound and so transformatory they're, they're so transformational they, they, they have this impact on you where you enter into a realm of the impossible and it's so easy to get to it just doesn't take that long and then all of a sudden you're there especially through things like uh, dimethyltryptamine which is also endogenous in the human brain if you can take that you will be transported into a realm of impossible beauty of geometric patterns that m move and dance in front of you and you're confronted with some sort of intelligence some sort of intelligence that's beyond anything you could possibly comprehend in our material realm i don't know what it is no one knows what it is people have uh, they think it's a well of souls they think it's an encounter with god they think it's aliens they think it's so many different things but there's um there's a a, a, a university in, I believe it's in London, that Graham Hancock was talking about, where they're doing a, they're 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 putting these people on an IV drip 
of dimethyltryptamine. Dimethyltryptamine is a is a very very potent psychedelic, but the body brings it back to baseline very quickly because it's endogenous in the human body. It's one of the the quickest drugs from the initial breakthrough experiences, which is insanely profound to 15 minutes later, you're completely sober. It's very, very quick. Mm. And these people that are having these experiences, they're mapping out these experiences in this very new and profound way where they're saying there, there might be some sort of chemical portal in the mind that can be activated through these psychedelic chemicals. And then you experience or perceive a uh, sort of transcendent beauty or... F uh... Overwhelming hmm. in, in a way that it's not... It, this is not like, you know, sitting in a field and feeling love. This is just an, a, an overwhelming thing that feels more real than reality itself. And it seems like you're kind of dipping your toe also into this infinite realm. And when, when you're experience, you, you almost feel like you're in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Like you can't really handle the whole thing. And so having just, had an experience like that, you're not inclined to a, a, a simplistic materialism as a <laughs> – there's something no. – you're saying there's something more. Well, anybody who hasn't had that yeah. experience that yeah. wants to uh, diminish it or wants to um, – somehow or another have a reductionist take yeah, of what yeah. it means to be a human being. I think you've had a limited amount of experiences if you want to say that. Like, I don't know, I don't know how you could d dismiss that without having it. Yeah. And a lot of people like Dawkins has not, have not had that. And I think, and he spoke openly about perhaps maybe one day uh, taking LSD under the right clinical settings, and he probably should do that. And it would be pretty profound. But I would, I would actually recommend a, a are, are, are there are there downsides of these experiences that people have? Are there bad trips, as it were? Sure. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. People have bad trips, and I think uh, some of that bad trip is trying to control the trip because your ego sort of takes over, and you try to like stop it because it's so overwhelming and scary. Maybe a little afraid. Uh, it's uh, very frightening. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's terrifying because it's, yeah. it's a complete loss of control, and reality melts down in front of you.